okay? It gets way worse than this. Way, way worse than this. A little car with a plexi chassis, a gearbox to the back wheels, a, um, a little coil of something, I don't know what, nothing really, a paper with wire wrapped around it, a switch, three coils here, three coils here, the front gearbox, uh, again, a dead battery, front wheels. There is no connection between the front of the box and the back of the box, and the back of the car. The switch is back here, the battery is back here. Again, the battery is dead, but there's still no connection. This switch, when you push it forward, the car will move forward. When you push it to the center, the car will stop. When you push it backwards, the car will back up. Okay? It gets even weirder. This is a plexi box. It contains a bunch of junk, cardboard tubes, toilet paper rolls, wrapped in wire. There's human hair in here. There's all sorts of junk. There's this pile of junk, which goes to a radio dial. There's this pile of junk, which goes to a speaker. No connection between these two piles of junk. No battery in this at all. No observable power source whatsoever. These coils here, which are nothing again but paper, large paper or cardboard coils with a few wires haphazardly wrapped around them, are stuffed with macaroni <laughs> and ravioli. Cooked or uncooked? <laughs> uncooked. <laughs> uncooked. He will turn this dial. Radio programs will come out of this speaker. And he will be able to get different stations at will. Okay? <clears throat> Gets way worse than this. This is, there are two types of remote control that he built for two different reasons. This one runs a little helicopter where the propeller turns and the light goes on inside the cabin. The remote control, a bunch of junk, no battery, with one wire leading to a jar of strawberry jam bolt, with a carriage bolt going through the cap into the jam. When he turns the carriage bolt, the propeller on the helicopter starts turning. When he lifts the carriage bolt, the light goes on. And he can make this do whatever he wants to do. He can hand it to you, and you can make it do exactly the same thing. There is no power source in this whatsoever. Another remote control. <clears throat> well, wait, let me go to this. Okay, this is a box again, a junk box, no battery, no nothing, all this crap in it with a bunch of dials on it. This is a tape recorder with a mono recording in it. It was recorded in monaural sound, not stereo. One wire connects these two. When he turns a dial on his box, he can separate the voice from the music or put them back together again. It's a mono recording. Okay. <clears throat> Last, and certainly not least, his other remote control, which he built to operate either a junker TV, which is broken, okay, or the radio, or a little motor with a propeller on it, at will, one at a time, in sequence, whatever you have, okay? Here's the remote control. Again, no battery whatsoever. Just coils, again, macaroni, things stuck to it everywhere, haphazard. <laughs> A tweezers is the switch. When you press it, what you think you want to turn on is what turns on. But the kicker, the main component of this remote control, he insists, has to be that he has glued two frog eyes to the end of it. And the frog eyes have to see what you're pointing at or it won't go on. And if you block the frog eye with a piece of cardboard, the device it's aiming at will shut off. <laughs> okay. Now, all of this is on this videotape, and you can see all these scientists sitting there going from the very beginning to scratching their heads and talking to each other in hushed tones to laughing hysterically at the end of this because there's just absolutely nothing here that has anything at all to do with physics, with science as we understand it, nothing. Obviously, this person is doing this somehow with his mind. Okay. Now here's the other thing that's really the kicker to this whole thing. Whether he built the machine or not, he can point at a machine, any machine, and if he decides to point at it and say, that machine's only going to run for five more minutes, it doesn't matter how good that machine is, it will never run again after five minutes. If he points to a machine and says, that machine will run forever, you can't shut it off. Okay. What does 
disposition like? Think about the, oh, he's just, he's like a child. He's like a happy child. Think about the implications of getting him to do that with nuclear weaponry or something. Mm -hmm. Negative. Mm -hmm. Because it would never work again if he simply said it, it oh, would never work again. Oh, yeah. He's in charge of this person. The psychologist. He has a false name when he's in public. No one knows his address. He is totally sequestered. So that's why, why people go good? Yeah. As far as I can tell. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I'd love to see it. Yeah, well, I think <coughs> Kirk is getting a copy of it, so we can make copies of that. And the video contains a couple of other interesting things, um, just very briefly, one of which deals with this other guy named John Hutchinson, which who has, who has managed to create and is now attempting to control uh, a series of uh, energy fields that create um, electromagnetic levitation, anti-gravity effects, plus a number of other effects like twisting metal bars in half and disintegrating them and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But he's on the, and I've seen the videotape shows you like huge steel balls like rising, rotating, levitating, things flying up to the ceiling once they're in this field, all sorts of crazy stuff. So he's getting, he's like from, I think when he was like 15, he continued the work of Nikola Tesla and he understands.